And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Merlin cast and finally made it happen. I got Lunar Spiral back on here. Hey, I. Hey. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to say, first of all, because um, bef- I, I do this partially to kind of promote some of my old friends and whatnot. And, and I look at the um, the YouTube channel status and I see you actually haven't put up a video in a while. Um, I do remember the last one you did uh, was for Rise of Skywalker, which I believe you were pretty mad about it, as many people yeah. were. Um, so I was wondering because uh, this might go into what we talk about. I, I feel like there's been a lot of frustration about a lot of things I see you post on Facebook. So I was wondering, is that have anything to do with the uh, lack of video stuff? But tell us what's going on with the channel. <laughs> um. Well, I've been trying to like get back into like making videos, but it's just been a bit of a struggle, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also like a bunch of other like also planning on other future projects as well but oh, really? of course like real life seems to be yeah and real life seems to be getting in the way at times because mm-hmm. like with work and uh taking care of the family and like mm-hmm. you know trying to take care of yourself which Definitely. that's also a bit of a struggle lately and mm-hmm. also with um the pandemic going on mm-hmm. it's just been getting dif- more difficult honestly yeah yeah i can i can relate to that i've been I've been trying to kind of, I've been trying to kind of upload stuff, but my, my channel's kind of been fluctuating a lot. Um, th- thankfully, I was able to, uh, I guess, actually, right around the time the pandemic started, they were kind of pushing us to work from home. So mm-hmm. that's, that's mostly what I've been doing is working from home. And I feel like, I don't, I feel like that makes it a little easier for me to work on video stuff when I have the downtime. Um, and actually, one of the nice things about it was, because the app in a zoom i've been using that to kind of reconnect with people so that i feel like before that i wasn't able to talk to as many people from the phantom group and all that stuff so it's been kind of cool to reconnect that way but yeah. um well let's see so you you said you're working on any projects are those going to be secret or do you have a general idea what they might be if you want to talk about um, it? i used to like well i mean i'm still planning to finish the rest of the uh, fan comments videos for uh, part three Mm-hmm. part four and then part five part five i still have to like put that on hold because i still got to do live reactions for part five as well okay. which i still have it i'm still holding that off because i because i know a lot of people want me to like react to part five which i'm still trying to do that mm-hmm. um i also have this other project that i'm trying to do like a lot of research on okay um so that's also something that i'm planning to do um also, like my focus has been shifting a lot of like um, Dungeons and Dragons. I've been like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. uh, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. I started playing like about three years ago, and I started becoming obsessed with like creating a whole bunch of new characters and playing and like playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's been like a lot of fun. Awesome. I, you know, I, I thought you did mention something. That's really cool. I feel like more people have been getting into that. Yeah. What, um, are you playing 5e or, or what, what other editions? Are uh, we're playing 5e. Yeah. Okay. That's really cool. I, um, it, you know, I actually just started playing 5e recently after a bunch of my friends have been doing it the last couple of years. And I, I was kind of, I think resistant to it because I, I'm mostly a Pathfinder guy. And if you remember, mm-hmm. that's what, I, that's what I got started with. And I, I played with a couple of the systems, but I, I had started with, I think it was fourth edition, my first time I ever played and I didn't like it. And so I didn't actually touch actual Dungeons and Dragons until fairly recently again. So, mm-hmm. but, I, but the game I've been in for five, is really good. What, uh, what type of classes you play? What type of characters you make? Tell me about it. That's really awesome. <laughs> well, uh, the first ever character I played is a high elf rogue, who I eventually multiclassed into um, Dragon Origin blood, um, Sorcerer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my other character, I think the one I've been playing a lot more is um, my Tiefling Celestial Warlock. <laughs> yeah. And then I also eventually multiclassed into Wild Magic Sorcerer because it's supposed to fit with her backstory. Mm-hmm. And the other character that I play is, it's actually a homebrew character. Uh, she's a half Wood Elf, half Earth Genasi monk, Way of the Four Elements. So, it, and the thing is, like, with these characters, like, I try to come up with, like, some really good backstories for them, and for some reason, I keep making them go through some angsty shit. I don't know why. Well, 
all right well one thing you you'll probably notice as you start making your characters and role playing them and kind of coming up with their backstories and everything which is one of the more fun creative processes of the whole mm -hmm. thing is that you, you'll probably find that you gravitate to certain characters you just like to do like everybody kind of has their comfort character that they enjoy playing so i i've noticed everybody kind of falls into those whether they don't want that whether they don't want to or not but you know you if you want to mix it up you can always just kind of think all right i'll try to play a character this way but well think about it though it's not necessarily a bad thing i mean look at look at most fantasy stories look at most superhero stories whatever Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the stuff that invites the best character growth is they go through some kind of struggle and yeah there's going to be some angsty stuff but, but you know what think about it that's that's just kind of like you know par for the course for most stories anyway that have any kind of interesting conflict in them right you know so yeah. it that's good catharsis anyway when you're playing a character that's there's nothing wrong with that you sound like you're a bit insecure about it man you're so angsty <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm trying not to make like a lot of angsty characters like i think i got like half of them who are just who just have like normal backstories mm -hmm. gotcha that's that's fine but I don't know. It could be fun to play that. What, what's um, I guess uh, as a, as an example, what's a, what's a background that might be a little bit more traumatic for one of them? Mm, let's see. Well, I mean, my my team in Celestial Warlock has has been gone through a lot of stuff, being discriminated from her old guild, mm -hmm. the big bad evil guy trying to possess her. Oh wow! Her, yeah, her clan getting split. And half of them are joint, half of them have allied with the big bad evil guy. Oh, wow. Uh, well, that, okay. Uh, well, yeah. not, you got me curious now. Um, okay. When, when you, and, and this is one of the things I think that it can be really a, a good strength for somebody running a game. When you make a character and you give the, the DM uh, a lot of the, the backstory and stuff, uh, do they try to kind of integrate that into the storyline for you? Um, or, yeah, if they, if, they, if they like it, then they will. <laughs> They'll do that. There will be times where they do come up with their own stuff for like for my characters that I don't expect. Like oh, I really? did not expect, yeah, because the part when I said about her old guild discriminating on her, that was not me. That okay. was all the DM. Okay, that's cool. You're right. That's true. The DM could sometimes kind of say, all right, if you give them like a general backstory, they can kind of integrate little things. That is cool. That yeah. is cool. So Lunar, you said how many uh games have you played in so far? How many campaigns? Uh, let's see. Let me see. Well, first one has kind of been on hiatus for a while. Uh, so I've been playing, I guess, three active, one hiatus. So that's like four. Okay. The campaigns. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me ask this. Would you ever have any interest or feel comfortable trying to run a game? Or have you done that already? Oh, um, honestly, no, I haven't. But I have thought about being a DM, which I thought would be a lot of fun. Uh, oh. It looks hard, though, because like, I don't know where exactly I would start or how to. OK, um, well, I, I can give you I could give you some general tips. Well, first of all, if you have somebody you're you're playing with who is your one of your DMs or whatever, of course, it's always good to have them maybe in the game to give you some advice or points of like they understand some of the rules better. Uh, and if you've got the, the book on hand, uh, that's always the obviously a good resource to have uh, I would say well I, I'll be honest I kind of like running the games because it's a really good way to exercise a lot of kind of creativity and writing and kind of establishing your world but it is a lot to handle um, because you uh, even with a lot of planning you kind of really have to think on your feet about like okay because mm -hmm. what's the character going to do and sometimes you might come up with like a combat situation or some other scenario that the characters might do something you don't expect and you got to be like okay well uh, I'll have to, you know, just kind of on the fly change something. So really, you, I think it's good to have a general template of what you want to happen. And if mm -hmm. you and if you really want your characters to get somewhere, you can still kind of push them that direction. But you really do have to allow some flexibility, uh, though. Sometimes if you feel like it, like if they really impress you with something you didn't expect, then it goes a different direction. Well, maybe you might have to deviate or something a little bit. But oh. I don't know. I think honestly. The thing about, I guess, being a, a DM is you are less focused on the one character, your character. So if you're more comfortable with that, I think it's really good to start off playing because you already know how to build a character. You already have a sense of how combat works. So you know how to the NPC, some role playing. So really, you've got a little bit of everything you know. You'd just be, you know, kind of creating the scenarios, the world, maybe some maps if you use uh, the grids or something. And 
you can role play different characters, you know. So really, I think if you get enough practice, you probably could handle it if you're interested. I'd say go for it. Definitely. No, thanks. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think I think um actually running a game is really fun. I haven't done it in a couple of years. I'm actually, but because of uh, COVID, unfortunately, it's been harder to get people together to do it because I like to kind of do it in person. We, we try to have people over sometimes, but um, I, I haven't run a game in a couple of years and I want to try to run like a Space Western or something like uh, kind of like Firefly or Trigun. It's kind of been in my back back of my mind for a bit so i just don't know what system to use because I, i've been told i probably could just like you know have guns or whatever in pathfinder or in in 5e but i wanted to use a system that actually is set for it but there actually aren't that many for it there is literally a firefly one and there is star wars i guess you could use one of those but i'm just like i wish there was one specifically for it but yeah yeah i'd say definitely definitely try to run a game sometime if you're interested it could be a lot of fun Okay. Just just take some planning, like, okay, you know, got to have the whole game set up for what I want to happen here, and they're going to meet this person and going to fight this thing, you know. I think I think the hardest thing for me in the beginning was just kind of getting a sense of combat, learning the different spells, the different resistance stuff for different monsters and things like that, but you'll learn that over time. That's just practice. Um, all right, so I was kind of curious. Well, first of all, I guess we could catch up a little bit. Um, okay. I'm, sure, I'm sure that you... I, I have a, I think I even watched the video, but I'm sure. Okay, so how do you feel about Star Wars right now? I guess because Rise of Skywalker. I I mean I thought just quick synopsis. I thought it was amazing, amazingly, really? amazingly bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like like and, and, uh, like that's the thing. I I'll admit I I know people are angry, but I I had a lot of mixed feelings about Last Jedi. So when I watched Rise of Skywalker, it was like clearly they were just throwing trying to please every fan. It was like fan fiction just thrown at the screen all over mm -hmm. the place. And so I kind of turned my brain off and I just had a good time. Palpatine was there. He was hamming it up. It was great, but it, it was, it was ridiculous. So I, I just remind me again, how you feel about that and star Wars in general and all that stuff. <laughs> well, I definitely hated rise of Skywalker and thinking about it. It was probably the worst out of <laughs> the sequel trilogy. Oh, wow. Yeah. I it, this whole trilogy itself has just been a complete mess after everything that they've done to these characters and how they how they bring up these force powers that no one has ever used before and this whole like they try to add in this whole new lore about this whole dyad thing but it's never been mentioned once the force dyad yeah that was I'm trying to remember was that that was it was the uh, bond between Ray and Kylo. Ray and Kylo, and they said that I actually forget because I only saw it once. It made them more powerful together. Is that why they could heal each other? No, she could heal people. She could heal people, and he was able to heal Ray, or basically like <laughs> near back from the dead. But that was like a, I guess, in exchange for his life force or something. Because yeah, he he did save her. Yeah, he saved her. So and he died. He basically sacrificed himself for her. Yeah. All right. All right. You know that actually is a good point to bring up. Okay, that's interesting because I, I will pick your brain on this. As everybody had issues with the the new trilogy and with Rise of Skywalker in general, but it seems like the one consistent thing most people were okay with was was Kylo and his character and growth. How did you feel about him? Honestly, <laughs> if, he, if it was written better, he would have been a really, really good character. Mm -hmm. But the issue I had with Kylo, I guess from, I guess from starting from Force Awakens and Last Jedi, he constantly flip-flops from being good to bad. It's like he's like inconsistent of which side he's supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's supposed to be intentional or not, but it he just... They try to make him like he's the next Darth Vader, but he's not. I don't even think he's a good villain, honestly. <laughs> I did like his talk with Han Solo, but thinking about it, it's just his memory. It's not actually Han Solo. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that was definitely a way for them to try to kind of redeem him. And I, I know what you're saying. I, I think that the thing about Kylo is, uh, I agree, it, it wasn't written particularly well, and it was very inconsistent. I think some people argued that, maybe added a certain degree of realism because he was so conflicted like in real life people might flip flop back and forth about how they feel i mean how well does that work for a movie i don't know but but honestly my biggest issue with kylo ren from the force awakens was i didn't think he was that intimidating of a villain 
no, like at all. He throws pissy fits a lot, and honestly, he <laughs> comes off as whiny. Ex exactly, and you know how much we love whiny characters. I, I remember when yeah. he had the, the helmet on, he was doing the Darth Vader thing initially when he's introduced. I thought, ooh, this is intimidating. I see what they're going for, but I like it. Took the mask off, and it, it didn't. His performance didn't quite work for me. And you're right, he he does do the the hissy fits, and uh, and also uh, people have talked about this, of course, a, a huge amount, but. When your hero beats the main villain in the first movie, even though he was injured or whatever, shot by mm -hmm. it's still there's no way to make him look more intimidating after that because we know that she already won, she could win again. It, it just the any any tension for me was done in the other movies. Like I right. he was sabotaged as the villain for me, to be honest. Right. So like when seeing them fight for the umpteenth time, you know that Ray was gonna win in some way. It's like, it's just, I can't get invested with their fight. <laughs> Did you, um, well, I'll tell you, my, my favorite part of the whole thing was, oh, oh actually, okay, first of all, I'll say, and I, I, I feel like I go over this as everybody. Unfortunately, whenever I'm bringing people back and just ranting about the same stuff, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. Pe people accept, expect at this point, I guess. I just, I yeah. like, I like complaining about it, but okay. For me, I, all right, I liked Snoke as a villain. I thought he was interesting. He was mysterious. He looked cool. It was Andy Serkis, right? He yeah. did a great job, of course. And then I know they were trying to be subversive and, oh, we'll, we'll change what Star Wars is all about. But they just take him out like nothing. And then mm -hmm. in Rise of Skywalker, that he was just a clone or something. It was just that, that, that. I, and then Palpatine's whole plan. I, I, we don't know what he is or how he came back or I, I don't know. I think Pal I every hearing theories that he was a clone himself, but that, that's the way it was in the comics. I know he he did have clones like in yeah. in the original expanding universe. That was a whole thing where there were a bunch of Palpatines. So but they never really said that exactly in the movie. It's like alluded to. Right. You know, and I think that they said, remember all those like people in the robes um, and at his where, where was that place? The the evil Sith planet, wherever the heck it was. I, I, those were supposed to be his followers or were they supposed to be Palpatine clones? I still don't know. I still don't know. Sorry. Oh, oh, geez. I think, I think cut out for a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, yeah. I was just wondering those, um, those, all those dark road robed figures at his, at the evil Sith planet or whatever, were they his followers or were I, they? I, I'd assume so because we, see them like at the Coliseum we see them like at the the, the cloning the cloning tubes so yeah. I'm assuming there was followers the issue is that I don't know what they are where they came <laughs> from how did Palpatine gather so many Sith followers also it, I, I don't know if it was explained in a freaking comic book or in a novel or something maybe probably. it is probably it, it probably is and, and to be fair if you're that hardcore about it i guess it's there but there is that old argument red letter media is always like you know well you, should, you see the movie self-contained you shouldn't have to like look for all this other stuff to get it right. actually and i just thought of something now whether they were clones or followers or more sith that he found on for years without anybody noticing they didn't do anything in that final fight at all like no. they, they didn't have, there were like thousands of them that what i guess they were just window dressing but uh <laughs> Yeah. Well, all right. I guess I guess this is kind of what I, I wanted to sort of lean into as well. The um, I, I feel like a lot of people have just kind of been complaining about uh, a lot of the franchises now, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, with with all like the stuff that's going on. And I guess the writing's not as good. And I'll be honest, I'm not even really I haven't really followed a lot of that stuff lately. I was slowly watching Star Trek and I haven't watched Doctor Who and since the, the new Doctor came on, I forget, 14th? Jodie Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker, yeah. Yeah, I, I watched her first one, which I thought was actually a fine episode, but um, I know I know you're, you, you've been angry about a lot of like recasting and stuff like that and just, you seem like you're just pretty annoyed about a lot of that stuff and I, I forget specific examples, but um, yeah. I, I remember there was like... Um, Oh, all right. Well, you, I think you, what was it you posted about, about Vic Bagnana? They were thinking about recasting him because of his controversies and all the right. FMA dubs. And, you know, I, I actually wanted to bring that up because you, you, you mentioned, and it kind of made me think about it. And I was like, you know, I, I understand it's really an awkward situation because even I'm thinking about it, whenever something like that comes up, you're like, well, they have this work done by this person and they did put a lot of themselves into it. Like when I think, 
you know me, I like Fulmer Lockmas. So when I think Edward Elbrick, I'm going to think Vic's voice. I, I grew up with the dub. I like the dub. So it's kind of hard to completely ignore that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I could understand the idea of recasting it, I guess, but but I, I'm I'm pretty good about separating the art from the artist, um, regardless. And I mean, I guess you could always watch the sub. So I don't know, how do you feel about that whole thing? I don't think Funimation would do that. No, I don't think so either. And I'll be honest, like uh, I tend not to talk about the whole controversy with the Kenyana because like I I kind of like try to stay neutral with this whole thing. And and besides, he hasn't been cast in, in anything since 2019. No. Um, but I just don't see the point of, re of redubbing an anime that already has a really good dub mm -hmm. all because of one voice actor. And this is a voice actor who plays a main character. Yeah. Like the dub is really good as it is. But, and also Full Metal Alchemist is done. It already has its anime and manga, it's all completed. Mm -hmm. But like with future projects that are still ongoing, it's totally fine to recast them because um, John Yan Bosch um, took his place to play uh, Broly for future um, Dragon Ball Super or um, future um, for the uh, Fighters, Fighters games. Mm -hmm. So, and that's fine because Dra Dragon Ball Super is still ongoing, especially with the manga. I don't know if they're going to continue with the anime. I, I still haven't yet to watch Dragon Ball Super myself. But. <laughs> I haven't watched too much of it either. I, I, I got, I, I've been slowly catching up. I got all the way up to the, um, to the, uh, oh, Goku Black arc, which I actually thought was the best one. Uh, but yeah, that I the thing is, there was so much spoiled and talked about that last tournament. And yeah, I heard, and, and I heard that it was like I saw I saw like a big super cut uh, somewhere somebody put up, but it was like all the fights are really short and some people they kind of get to do things, but not really. And I was like, eh, so I'll probably watch it eventually. But I, I don't know, like I I'll, I'll we'll let you know something, though. I don't know mm -hmm. if I mentioned this that and I mean, this might be another reason, too, why I haven't been super about super about jumping on super yeah. i did that sorry that was that was an unintentional pun for once right. but but uh it, oh she doesn't believe me uh <laughs> <laughs> no no uh, uh the uh <laughs> damn it um with uh with all the super stuff i think that it really is kind of like sort of a best of dragon ball because mm -hmm. they're really just recycling old arcs like goku black is really just future trunks again yeah it's, it's the androids again it's literally yeah. I mean, the villain is interesting, and it's but it is really just the kind of condensed. Like, I I always hear they compared uh, Goku Black with Aizen for some reason. Uh, well, that's because well, that's because he's got like the whole um, you know, celestial versus mortal thing. He's got the uh -huh. the complex, but I mean, I think Aizen might be a more interesting villain comparison. But the thing the thing about about Goku Black. Um, and I actually forgot his actual name because that's not his real name. Oh, Zamasu. Yes, uh, he he actually was a really interesting villain. I think he might he might be the most like complicated um, Dragon Ball villain that I can uh, that I can think of seeing recently. Um, but he wasn't around very long, and I feel like Luna froze on me. I think she did. Yep. Hey. <laughs> I got cut out. What the moment you said complicated. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I I will well, all right. There's this annoying thing that my my computer does where I got the built-in Wi-Fi right, but for some reason it will randomly just disconnect from the Wi-Fi sometimes. Oh. Don't know why, because I'm like, okay, well, she's frozen. Is it her? Or is it me this time? I'm like, wow, okay, no signal. Let's just click that back. No idea what does that, but yeah. Basically, long story short, I thought he was honestly one of the most complicated villains um, I've seen in Dragon Ball. I, I really, no, I'm serious. I thought he was a really interesting villain with an interesting motivation, but he wasn't around very long. Mm. You know, so it's kind of like, I don't know. Um, yeah, though I feel I, another thing too. They just brought Frieza back. For like the I I heard and I I I'm gonna be honest I don't like I told Frieza what the fuck I don't <laughs> like the fact that Frieza was brought back to life again. It's the third just, time. 
Yeah. Well, all right. Did, did you, you like did, it? I forget. Did you see Fukatsu New F like back in? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. D did you like it? I, yeah, I thought it was a fun movie, but I still prefer Battle of Gods. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. That actually had more more going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, I, I agree. I, I I mean, I get, like I said, it's playing the hits. Like you want to, it's basically all satisfying the fans like a lot of franchises are doing these days. So on one hand, I get bringing Frieza back because everybody loves him. But I, I do think it's, you could give some other old villains some love or make up some more new ones, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, but yeah. And then they made him like a main character and they're like teaming up with them. And it's just... I don't know. I mean, and you don't and and you know what's something that annoys me too is Cell, I still say is the best villain. And Cell yeah. is and he's I and he's like my favorite. Um and he if you used to do those old polls, you look at them, Frieza and Cell were always like neck and neck with popularity, right? Mm -hmm. Now now since Frieza's brought back, nobody cares about Cell anymore. Boo's got more presence. Nobody cares about Cell, I'm telling you. I it just really baffles me that he gets brought back alive and it's like he he's still evil right he's <laughs> yeah still, he still has his army he's still going around terrorizing terrorizing people and and like attacking planets well goku I... he's still a bad guy and and everybody's totally fine with him being alive oh. except for vegeta which i don't blame <laughs> him honestly I, 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 i'm just gonna straight up say Vegeta should have gotten the kill in Fukatsu no F. He should have gotten the kill. You're you're probably right about that. I I feel like everybody's kind of well, they're they're making an allegiance with him because they gotta save the universe. I get that, but I think it's like a temporary thing. I, I know Goku's always like, well, if I have a strong opponent, I can keep him around if he keeps getting strong. You know, that's his whole deal. So I that might just be an annoying I, I'm sure there's a reason. Well, then the Broly movie, it was clear Freeze is still evil because he's gotta try and use Broly to to wipe everybody out that's like his plan that they're yeah doing. so yeah he's still it ends with him attacking another planet so. <laughs> i don't know why goku doesn't care you know may maybe they say that in super even if they do it's a weak explanation whatever it is like either well, frieza maybe they should make an arc where the villain is one of frieza's victims and he blames goku and the people of earth for bringing him back that would be good uh, that would be good. Uh, uh, that could be something. That could be. That's a good idea. Uh, I forget. Did you um? Did you see the Broly movie? Actually. Yeah, I did. I saw it in theaters. It was great. Me too. I, I, I liked dub, that. By the way, I saw it in the dub. Yeah, I I saw the dub too. Um, did you um? Uh, wait. I'm trying to. I think I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh. I think I. She, man, this connection. <laughs> she froze on me again. Man, this, this, this call's going great. <laughs> Any, uh, there, there I, she is. Yeah, I think it's Maya now. Yeah, that's okay. But um, okay. anyway, it's okay. Oh, this geez. is what this this call's going really smoothly. Um, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. One of my favorite things about the Broly movie was that it kind of expanded <laughs> sneeze and coming. Uh that it expanded <laughs> on <laughs> bless you. Expanded on um Frieza's army. And I liked the fact that Broly befriended some soldiers and it showed that there were people that worked for Frieza that weren't all evil. They were just kind of like conscripted. Yeah. That was a cool little detail. And I and I loved the world building for that. So I feel like there were some people that hated on that movie, but I really liked it actually why oh i don't know they, well, they made us sympathize with broly they made Broly an actual character i know that's why i liked it i remember i remember and you could find it on my channel i made a video where i was ranting like man broly movie of course they'll make a movie about him he's so popular but he's a, barely a character i was so annoyed about that but then i actually watched it and i was like they actually made me care about broly that's pretty impressive yeah <laughs> yeah that was really good i i did not expect that um yeah yeah that's uh that's something um so let's see have you been uh i i'll admit i haven't really watched um too much anime lately have you been following up anything recently or catching up on anything um uh not a lot 
I've been reading the Boruto manga. Oh, how's that? Because been? I got tired of the anime. <laughs> I I haven't checked out any of that. I, I heard I've heard some people I've heard mixed things about it. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> well, for one thing, uh the Otatsuki are alien parasites. Aliens? They're alien parasites. As in like they can possess other people's bodies, like the anime parasite, like that. Oh. Um... Which, yeah. Which Boruto has, so Momoshiki is inside Boruto's body and is going to slowly take over him and come alive again. Okay. Yeah. That's... And then they introduced this uh, new form for, uh, the, for the Cuban mode for Naruto called the Baryon mode. Okay. What's that? It's basically every time Naruto punches an opponent, it, sh it shortens their lifespan. <laughs> and it also um it also runs on i think not on his chakra but on his energy or something so if he uses it for too long he could die too well okay so i was gonna say that's pretty op but they kind of have a caveat so he can't yeah. overdo it is that is that that's probably like the last minute thing all right well at least there's something new i never heard of that something like that before yeah <laughs> oh also also um sasuke got his renegon eye stabbed Okay. Borto got Borto got possessed by Momoshiki, and he stabbed Sasuke in the Rinnegan. So he <laughs> might have lost his freaking eye. That the one he, that he always uses. Yeah, that that might be a handicap. That could be interesting though if he loses it and he has to like do some training to get it back or something. Or I don't I don't know. I mean, like then again, like I I can't take eye powers seriously anymore, in Naruto. <laughs> Why not? Because you can take them out and put them back on. <laughs> That's you can get eye transplants. I don't know how the, the internal monkey striking works. Like, do they just take <laughs> out the eye and then switch the the other eye, or do they just use the eyes together and put it in? Like, how does that? They never explain that. That's actually kind of surprising. They never explain it, but you're right. There was a lot of the eye popping. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's true. Um, man. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. I what this was something that like we we would try to schedule to do. And we finally do it. And it's like, yay. it's a yay, we did it. So I, I, I'll i tell you what, I've got to like go to work in like five, 10 minutes. So okay. Lunar, Lunar, it's on you. Any any final thing you want to talk about before we wrap up quick? Because uh, I feel like I did, we did way too much talking. <laughs> um, not sure, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, well, I don't know. Well. You know what? It's been on everybody's mind. Did you uh, have you been watching The Mandalorian at all? Oh yeah. Okay. I've, I've finished. I've watched like the first two seasons. Of, honestly, The Mandalorian's pretty good. Um, probably one of the few good things to come out from Disney Star Wars. But then there's the whole High Republic stuff that's going on, which I, I am oh. not interested. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I, I've heard a little bit about the High Republic. I haven't, I haven't caught up on Mandalorian yet because I was trying to watch with somebody and, and it just hasn't happened. Uh, so I'm just like, I only saw the first couple episodes, but from what I saw, I really did like. Um, and uh, the High Republic thing is, I heard that. So yeah, somebody, yeah, a couple of my friends told me about that. They said that the main character is like kind of a super, like overpowered Jedi student, and there was like a panel where apparently she got kicked off like a cliff and she was able to stop herself with her lightsaber which wouldn't really work because it, it would just cut through it so yeah should have slowed maybe slowed her down but it stopped like mid cliff or something what 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 was the issue with that i heard a lot i've heard a lot of hate about that but i don't know much about it uh, i think it's because i think um I'm probably going to assume that people thought that the High Republic was just going to be like SJW trash or something. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I know that there's been um, a, a lot of, uh, I guess that's been a lot of the, the issue that's popped up from what I've heard in a lot of these big, big uh, kind of geek properties is this idea of trying to kind of be very inclusive, but sometimes the inclusivity, I guess, uh, I guess annoys people because it interferes with just writing. Like there was some, mm. there was some comic, I forget. If, I think it was for Marvel where they were going to try to release a line that was very, um, I guess. Oh I, yeah, the new the new Warriors. Yeah, the, was, yeah. I I I saw some of the those panels 
and and for and I heard I heard some of the there was like a video someone showed me about it and I'll be honest I thought that it was a parody I thought that it was like a it was a joke it was like making fun of superheroes or something and I was like like that like and I I couldn't believe that was a real thing that was going to be published and I like that's what I'm saying is I get that like people want to be inclusive but you know there, there it is also like you know fantasy and <laughs> you know for a reason but <laughs> yeah, but like we're totally fine with diversity, representation, and inclusion as long as it's done right. If you're just doing this for the sake of like adding adding diversity mm -hmm. and not like trying to incorporate it into story, not like having it flush well and have these characters just only be about the diversity and nothing else, then it's gonna suck. It's kind of like uh, something that comes up, which uh, like um, I forget. It's like something you'll see on the CW or something where like um, there'll be a lot of gay or lesbian characters, but they just kind of like focus on that, and that's like the only thing about their character. Like, but there's not anything dynamic. Like they're actually people. You mm -hmm. know, if, if they're there just for the sake of saying, "Oh, we've got a character that checks this box," if you don't really care about writing that character as a person, how much do you really care about inclusivity or diversity or whatever? It just shows that you don't really care at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is unfortunate. Well, hopefully, well, it's, you know, it, it's kind of one of the, those main ideas that, like, once again, I think if the writing is first and you care about tearing, telling a good story, you know, then it's cool if you've got a diverse character in there. But I guess that shouldn't be the main focus, you know, at right. least at least not for its own sake, right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, uh yeah i kind of i i kind of wanted to get pick brain on that because i know you you comment about that stuff all the time <laughs> yeah i do i don't yeah. usually comment a lot on my on my youtube channel but I, I still do no but i just see it on facebook sometimes like oh lunar's bad about this again like i think i always think it's kind of funny at least there's some interesting things to say about it but uh, <laughs> you, you do you're, you're very passionate about it. i'm like well i gotta at least ask her about it on here but um all right well I got to go to work in a couple minutes, but I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, Lunar, I'm glad we got to do this little uh, Zoom Merlin cast thing. So we made it. We made it happen. Yeah, <laughs> we made it. We made it happen. So that's cool. Um, I'll let you know. I'm trying to kind of see if I can get a bunch of the Phantom group people on here, but I do want to try and see if we can get like a group call in or a Skype call or whatever and get us all to hang out or something at some point. If okay. if we can make the schedules work, it's it's a lot harder these days, but yeah. Still, I, I get it though. I get it. We're all busy, school, work, family, but you know, we'll make it happen. Um, all right. Well, Lunar, thank you once again for coming on. Please, uh, I, if you got more videos coming up for JoJo or anything, I'll, I'll let people know. Check out our channel. There's a lot of great old videos there and new stuff coming up. I'm soon. But uh, if that's it, I'm going to say uh, bye bye. Say bye, Lunar. Bye, everybody. <laughs> all right. Stay magical, everybody.